Good morning, everyone. My name is Vidu, a PhD candidate at Monash University, Melbourne, Australia. Thanks for giving me a chance to share with you my research regarding the factors influencing the development of institutional open educational resource repository in Vietnam. So this is the outline of my research, uh, my presentation today, which includes uh, five main sections. Introductions, theoretical framework, research process, uh, process, research findings, and expected contributions. So I'm now at the um, at the final years, and I will have my final review um, next week. So I have some findings, and I'm excited to share with you. OK, so I believe that you all know about OER, so I would, don't need to talk about that anymore. So I will share with you the context of the research. Vietnam is a developing country in the eastern mosque on the Southeast Asian Indo-Chinese Peninsula and a population of more than 95 million in 2018. Yeah, with 235 university and institution and more than 1.7 million of students, Vietnam has a strong need for and considerable potential for developing and using OER. Yeah. Uh, for 15 years, since OER was introduced officially in Vietnam via uh, the development of the Vietnam Open Educational Resources Program in 2005, OER-related activities have grown ranging from national scientific seminar to institutional training, uh, training courses. Yeah. Uh, despite the opportunities, support for uh, support of many parties, the strong need for as well as considerable potential in developing and using OER, not many uh, student and educator use OER in Vietnam, and not many OER uh, IOER repository. It means institutional OER repository develop either. Why not? The curiosity encouraged me to seeking the answer for this question. Yeah, the phenomenon in investigated in this study is the educational reform, reform through the IOER repository development. The reform is the change from a close to a more open philosophy and practice in education, which allow new knowledge to be built. In this study, I adopt uh, the educational change theory proposed by Michael Fullan to generate a theoretical framework to understand the factor affecting the IOER repository development in Vietnam. The structure of the theory comprises two main components. First is the change process, and the second is the factor affecting that change uh, process. Only the factor affecting phase uh, one and phase two will be included because um, so far, um, uh, today, very few IOER repository have been implemented in Vietnam. Is, yeah. So, to achieve the research objectives, this study has three research questions, as you can see. And, uh, yeah, sorry, it was too small. So three research questions. The first one is, uh, what is the process of the IOER repository development in Vietnam? And the second one is, what are the factors affecting the development of IOER repository in Vietnam? And the third one is, how can the theory can be applied to understand the, the development of IOER repository at university in the context of Vietnam? So this figure illustrates the research methods and methodology used in this research. For the sample, I adopt the snowballing technique. I use a structure interview to collect data. Conventional uh, content analysis was adopted to analyze the data. The initial finding was first drawn from the collected data during the coding process and then compared with the theoretical framework and literature to form the research findings. 20 participants are from 14 university and institutions from uh, four largest cities in Vietnam by population. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the development process pointed out by the participant of this study. So they concluded that in the absence of government policy, a bottom-up uh, approach will, would, will be more efficient to be developed. Uh, to develop the IOER repository in Vietnam. 
This study also found that uh, the IOA repository development in Vietnam requires five steps in the implementation phase, and each step includes many tasks as well as activities. Yeah, so this research finding corroborate and advance the theoretical framework with six factors affecting IOER repository development, namely characteristic of and access to the change, political factors, e economic factors, social factors, technological factors, and legal factors. So the first factor found from this research are the characteristic of and access to IOER repository development. This is in agreement with the theoretical framework in which the need of and the perceived need of change as well as characteristic of the change, such as uh, complexity, accessibility, practicalities will have uh, influence on the change. Yeah, the second factors affected the education change is political factors. And there were remarkable correlation between the political factors and other factors pointed out in this study. The interview is also suggested that the government education uh, policies play a vital role in the development of IOER repository as they interact significantly with other factors. And uh, participants also suggested that the institutional policy has a profound influence on uh, stakeholder support as and uh, user acceptance as well. They also noted that the type of educational uh, education establishment, for example, like private or um, uh, public university, is an influence on the development process. Yeah, consistent with the theoretical framework, this study confirmed that funding is another influence that contribute to the success of the chain process as they are the cost for, they are the cost for development and management of uh, the repository such as uh, ICT infrastructure and facilities improvement uh, salaries for human resources training and workshop yeah and we I also found that the institutional autonomy appeared to be uh, appeared to be a facilitating factor in this case. Yeah, so after policy, the characteristic of the internal and external communities and their advocacy are the next most influential factors of the change process validated uh, by this study. So the roles of university administrator is vital as they are the policy and decision makers. Difference in the differences in the characteristic of community also lead to different attitude toward the change programs. So for example, like uh, the community um, there are some, let's say, uh, university and student are in remote areas. So they are uh, usually they cannot access a good um, technology and uh, they cannot be support. So their attitude towards the development of OER and toward the use toward the use of OER also different from uni from university and student from university in the um, big city. And this, city, uh, this study also found that the habits and cultures in learning and teaching in Vietnam also affected the uh, characteristic and attitude of stakeholders. In this study, the champions are identified as the gain agents. So uh, their role is really important. Yeah, so this study found that IOER repository operations is technology are uh, driven, so that heavily influenced by technological factors. Depending on the scale and the goal of development programs, technological factors will have different impacts on the development process. The result of this study found that legal factors also have a great impact on the uh, on the educational change process activities of uh, individuals and organizations in Vietnam particulars are performed under the state surveillance through Vietnam legal system. And educational, education and training in Vietnam is governed by many laws, among with the education law and law on intellectual property rights at uh, is such a great influence. As a result, uh, as a result uh, IOER repository development activities in Vietnam are heavily influenced by legal factors. However, 
is it also expected that the Vietnamese legal system will be influenced back by the open movement in Vietnam? Yeah, uh, the finding from this study make contribution to current theory as well as practice. For the theory, this study attempt to um, provide an understanding on how the theory of educational change be applied to the to explain the uh, phenomenon in the uh, developing country context like Vietnam. And next is a critical review into the usefulness and uh, limitations of educational gene theory in studying the gene process that higher education level is another major expected contribution. The main findings will also contribute to the educational gene literature by identifying the gene process as well as different factors affecting the process. Yeah, the findings from this study will also make a range of practical contributions, namely exploring the IOER uh, repository development process in Vietnam, uh, explaining the factor affecting the development process, providing a recommendations, uh, some recommendations and implications for Vietnamese university regarding IOER development. And, uh, and uh, I will provide a conceptual framework for developing IOER repository in Vietnam at the end of the uh, 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 research. Yeah, so thanks for your attention. I also would like to send my deepest uh, gratitude to my supervisor and mentor for their dedicated support and supervision. Thank you. So sorry that because when I click on the slide, it takes some time to load. Oh, no worries at all. No, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, V. Yeah. That was sorry. a fantastic presentation and really interesting. Um, I'm going to open yeah. up the questions. Um, now, um, I have some questions, but I'm going to um, uh, open it up. Um, Leo, I'm going to turn your microphone on as well so that you can ask a question directly rather than um, in the chat. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. I just wanted to pick up while um, everyone's thinking um, about questions and things to ask. You mentioned the role of university administrators um, as yeah. being important um, to kind of... Uh, you know, and encouraging um, uh, the conversation around around OER. I wondered um, if you could, um, if there was, or what the role was for librarians, or whether there was any insights into the role of librarians through your research. Um, you know, in the UK and um, in other countries, you know, librarians have often got a kind of key role in terms of raising awareness of um, OER. Um, and I just wondered, yeah, um, what the um, what you found from your research or whether yeah it was more kind of administrative um where where that was yeah thank you yeah so uh, uh in my in the vietnamese context uh so the participant proposed that the libraries and library staff are support to be uh because they are the it's the obligation of them to develop uh the repos repository for uh, normal, let's say not OER, but uh, original uh, educational resources. So they believe that that is their obligations. And then they also stated that librarians, they have uh, their resources, for example, like um, ICT infrastructure, they also have their uh, human resources to support to that uh, development process. And the third one is they believe that uh, librarians they have the skill uh no they have the relationship with different parties within the university that is so that it uh the job for them uh librarians and library staff are the best in the best position to be uh the implementers of the ioer repository development projects and what they can do actually in practice they they are the one who provide the support during uh the development and uh, awareness raising uh, is one of it. And for example, like on the thing related to inter, uh, information literacy uh, mm. trend, or um, let's say, um, uh, what else? Um, uh, knowledge, providing knowledge about um, IP and copyrights. Uh, mm. They also have to, um, actually they, they their job, they, they have the 
user to find the material, the particular resources that um, that uh, user wants. So it's also applicable to OER. So uh, yeah, yeah. Apart apart from that, I believe that there is also there are many things that librarians can do. Yeah, not just that. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Fee. Yeah, thank you. Um, did anyone have any questions or comments? Oh, Leo. Hi, Leo. Um, hi, V. That was really interesting. Um, I had a question, actually. I thought it was um, interesting the part when you were saying about um, that in Vietnam there being kind of no legal recognition of Creative Commons licenses um, or it, it, um, something along those lines. I'm not sure if I completely understood it. So could you tell us a bit more about, about that? Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat it? Uh, the questions. The the question was about the kind of legal recognition of open licenses in Vietnam and how that you were sort of saying that's not really present, um, which makes mm. it which is can be a bit of a barrier for people to um, make open resources. So could could you say a bit more about how in practice what what that means? Oh, so actually. Uh, yeah, my study found that uh, there's the lack of clarity in copyright policy and law in Vietnam, which uh, preventing stakeholders from harnessing and cre creating OER. So, because in the, um, there's also a lack of uh, legislation that regulate and recognize the legal va uh, validity of um, the license of open source open source initiative. So not only uh, Creative Commons, but also like GNU, they, there actually no, no, nothing uh, from the government that accepted, legally accepted those uh, open license. So that's why users in Vietnam actually they they don't, I can say that they don't dare and they don't want to use OER or even create OER because it's not approved. So the only things that exist are are kind of copyright materials. I mean, everything is. Yeah. is considered to be under copyright. Yeah, it's like unprotected. Even for the culture of sharing, it's one of the, uh, I can say that the challenges for the IOER repository development in Vietnam, that is people don't, don't, I'm like, it's very different in uh, maybe your country, but in Vietnam, they tend to protect your intellectual property because they afraid uh, the fear of being plagiarized or even they, discover to be deliberately plagiarized so they mm. just for everything although we have a lot of like uh, copyright infringement cases in vietnam because of that but yeah that's the fact okay thank you that's really interesting thank you thanks so much leo and thanks v um that's great um we're going to turn now um, to um, our next presenter, but there'll be more time at the end as well for questions, so we can um, come back and um, and uh, and talk more as well. Then, so thanks ever so much again, V. That was fascinating um, and really fantastic presentation. Great. So I'm just going to set us up now. So um, yeah, I'm um, so pleased to welcome. Um, Samia, um, who's going to talk to us now about um, mainstreaming OER in um, Saudi uh, HEIs. Thank you so much, Samia. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bet. Uh, first of all, I would uh, I would say thank you for GoGN for providing me with this uh, chance to present part of my PhD project. And uh, if you allow me to introduce myself again, uh, I'm Samia Musa from uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, I'm PhD student at University of Leeds, uh, as well as a lecturer at Princess Noura University in, in Riyadh. Today, I'm going, I'm going to present the first stage of my uh, uh, PhD project, uh, which, which was the, um, the questionnaire findings. And my research topic is about the factors influencing the adoption of IRs by uh, university academics in Saudi Arabia. Uh, just bear with me. Okay. 
Uh, in this presentation, uh, I'm going to, uh, to talk about the research context, uh, some of the literature review, as well as the research questions, the proposed conceptual framework, the uh, research approach, and the, some of my findings. Okay, uh, I put some animation, but it's not a, in, in this uh, presentation. I don't know why, but okay. Um, in Saudi Arabia, we have, a, uh, we have created, uh, created the uh, Saudi Arabian Vision uh, 2030, which prioritized the lifelong learning um, and support the open education in general, uh, online uh, um, education as well. In, uh, in March 2018, uh, the National E-Learning Center uh, launched a, um, a new uh, National Saudi OER platform, while we call it uh, SHMS or SHMS. Uh, it's acronym for uh, Arabic uh, name. And in 2018 as well, the, uh, the SHAMS platform won the uh, of OE, OEC uh, Award for Open Resources Tools and uh, Practices Award. Um, on Twitter, I found this from the uh, OER's uh, comments. Uh, when, um, when, when we launched the uh, SHAMS, they said, we hope it may serve uh, as a flagship example to inspire the use of OER and collaboration practices in the region generally. Uh, the, reason, the reason that I uh, have chose this topic because um, OERs or in open education in general, it becomes a hot topic. Uh, we have, a, uh, as, as the literature said, we have limited research on factors influencing the, the choices of academics in terms of uh, OER uh, adoption worldwide, as well as in Arab context. The culture of users plays a vital, uh, a vital role in, um, in facilitators uh, in, or in uh, university academics adoption of OERs. Uh, the, the other reason for uh, for choosing this uh, this project, there is a need for uh, for research about OER adoption in non English speaking countries. Uh, in Arab world, uh, we are still in uh, in early stage of uh, open education and uh, uh, specifically in OER's um, initiative. There is a need to include supporting professionals like uh, e-learning assistant. In, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in every university, we have a e-learning center, okay? And we have uh, e-learning assistant for every university. So what's the role of these people uh, in, uh, in order to support the OER's adoption by university academics? This is what I want to explore in my research. Okay, uh, after reading all these literature review, uh, I, I came across with these research questions. Uh, what are the independent variables or, or factors that have significant effects on academics adoption of OERs in Saudi University? What I mean by adoption, uh, it's, uh, it includes uh, use and share of OERs, okay? Uh, the, the second uh, research question about the moderators, um, uh, it, it will be in two sets of moderators, the Hafez's cultural dimension, as well as the some the, uh, of the demographic uh, personal uh, factors. Uh, whether they they have a role of uh, mediation between the independent and dependent variables, as we will see in the next uh, slides. Uh, how about the barriers that uh, my, uh, may, may hinder the academics from adopting uh, OERs? Uh, what's the role of, um, 
of e-learning center assistance or e-learning uh, in, in in every uh, university or in this actually in this in this university uh, in uh, in order to help the academics um, uh, adoption of OERs. Um, sorry. In this uh, in this presentation, due to the limited of time, I'm going to focus on on only the first uh, research question. The proposed conceptual framework that I uh, adopted in my research is um, uh, is the uh, unified theory of acceptance and use uh, technology. Uh, do you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> this is actually first time for me to present online. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> no, it sounded great, really clear. Okay. Um, this is actually UTAUT uh, by, uh, by Tinkatch and his colleague. Um, and I'm going to, um, to explain uh, what, what does mean by every factor in this uh, theory. Okay, the uh, in, in in my research, I, I integrated uh, the the UTAUT with additional uh, factors uh, such as the uh, quality of OERs uh, and sharing, as well as I uh, I integrate the half state cultural dimension. So uh, the the final uh, the final conceptual framework that I uh, I adopted uh, include the uh, UTAUT as well as uh, Mishra and Hofested. Okay, so uh, I tried to uh, to divide these factors in individual factors, social factors, pedagogical factors, and uh, institution institutional uh, factors. So, what does mean by uh, prefer performance expectancy? It's actually uh, how the academics believes when they use the OERs or share or, or, or let's say adopt OERs will improve their uh, work or their teaching. Uh, the effort expectancy, uh, how the academics uh, see the, 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 the adoption of OERs, whether uh, uh, have much of effort or not. Social, influ uh, social influence, um, how about the, their, uh, the other uh, academics in, in, in university uh, uh, will influence, um, whether uh, positively or negatively, uh, uh, their colleagues uh, on OER's adoption. The quality of, um, of OER's, uh, it's actually the features of uh, OER's uh, content that the academics uh, view or, or per per perspective, um, whether the, they can use it or how about the, the, the degree of the value and worth of uh, this content. The facilitating conditions, um, it's about the uh, institutional um, technical support um, infrastructure uh, as well so uh, something um, related to the institution or the university the uh, behavior intention uh, how the uh, academics perceived the uh, uh, the OER's adoption um, whether they tend to use or not so something related to their intonation the uh, OERs usage, the actual use of OERs and sharing, uh, how they, um, how they, um, whether they will redisseminate their uh, teaching materials or their uh, uh, publication uh, in general in uh, public domain, and uh, some of the uh, half culture culture di um, dimension, power distance, uh, uncertainty, avoidance, and uh, collectivism, uh, some uh, of the demographic uh, moderators. And, and uh, today I'm going to only present the, uh, the, the findings of the uh, independent and dependent variables without the uh, moderators, because I'm worried about the time. 
uh, research approach or uh, methodology, um, I apply the mix method uh, questionnaire, uh, and then the next one, the uh, and the next stage, uh, the uh, interviews. Uh, my uh, my participants, the academic university, uh, as well as the e learning uh, assistant. So with the e-learning assistance only, um, uh, I'm going to do the uh, interview, semi-structure interview. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of this uh, happy year, uh, I publish uh, my questionnaire uh, for three months. Um, and I received around uh, 512. Uh, the, after cleaning the data, uh, I found uh, I have only 504 questionnaire um, fully completed. Uh, the the data analysis uh, analyze the um, uh, I analyze the 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 the, uh, the questionnaire by using SPSS and um, MOS uh, test. Uh, it's um, analysis uh, of moment. Um, uh, just bear with me, please. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I start with the first stage uh, descriptive analysis. Uh, the second one, I start. Uh, I, I analyze the um, the data with a structure uh, equation model using a AMOS to test and uh, evaluate the proposed uh, conceptual framework. Okay, uh, I will not uh, uh, present all the descriptive um, findings. Uh, however, I'm going. I'm going to mention the the, the only the uh, Saudi uh, nationality uh, and the other nationality. I mean the res, uh, I mean the the number of uh, responses that I have. Um, the Saudi academics uh, were uh, 360, 60, and the other nationality uh, was 144. And I have question about this, but at the end of my uh, presentation. Okay, um, the findings that I have so far. Uh, the first uh, or the most significant uh, um, impact on uh, behavior intention was the quality of uh, of uh, OER content, uh, it was the most uh, significant impact of uh, on the behavior intention, and the second one, performance ex uh, expectancy. The responses that mentioned that the when when, when they believe the uh, using or adopt uh, adopt of OERs in uh, in their uh, teaching materials will improve their uh, um, uh, teaching work. Uh, so uh, this is the second uh, significant, um, uh, di uh, direct significant on, on behavior intention. Um, what, what was really interesting, uh, I found the quality of uh, OER's uh, uh, content has direct uh, effect or direct impact on sharing. So the the participants believe that when when they um, adopt uh, a content of um, or, or, or or let's say when they uh, prepare their teaching materials and they they found the 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 quality of their work is high uh, they 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 tend to share their work so uh, I think this is something related to their. Uh, uh, confidence of their work. The social influence, uh, also uh, I found a, an interesting uh, result. Um, the, uh, I found only the, the, the young academics from, uh, let's say from 30 to 40, uh, who believe that the, their, uh, the, their colleagues can impact their uh, uh, 
opinion of uh, OER's uh, adoption. Facilitating conditions. Um, uh, I haven't noticed that uh, significant impact, uh, maybe because the, this university that I uh, um, I use in my uh, study uh, have a uh, high standard of uh, technical support. So, so maybe because of that reason, but the, the, I found as well when, when, when the participants uh, uh, start to share or uh, disseminate their teaching work, they found some, um, uh, some difficulties, so they need some support from their university. The, the most interesting um, result, effort expectancy, uh, didn't have any uh, impact on behavior intention. So the university, the, the, the academics believe that uh, if they want to use the OERs or adopt the OERs, they don't care about the, uh, the effort. So it's something uh, related to their uh, uh, motivation, I think. So um, th uh, this is the first uh, stage of my uh, of my research, which only uh, related to Saudi academics. So uh, now I were um, I tried to uh, analyze the uh, the non Saudi academics, and then uh, I'm gonna compare the the findings of the uh, Saudi and non Saudi. Uh, indeed, um, this. Um, this this result is only related to the uh, people or the academics who only use uh, OERs. So non-user, uh, it was around 100. Uh, I uh, I eliminate, eliminated this uh, non-user, so I focus only on user, uh, whether they will share their teaching materials or not in uh, public domain. Uh, Okay, thank you. And uh, if you have any question or or suggestion to, uh, to improve my work or my research uh, PhD, please, please, please uh, share me your thoughts. And thank you for my uh, sponsor, Princess Nora University. Thank you for the National E-Learning Center. Uh, they encourage me to do this research, and I'm going uh, to share uh, the final findings uh, with them. And the massive thank you to my uh, university and my supervisors. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samia. Samia, that was fantastic. Thank you. Um, thank you. I can see we've got lots of um, great comments and questions um, in in the chat box. Um, I can see um, that Martin's got a question from earlier um, as well. So he asks, did you get to compare OER adoption with other countries? For example, are there different factors? at play in Saudi Arabia than, say, the United States? Uh, no, but what I will do, I want to compare between the uh, the Saudi and non-Saudi, actually. So it will be different culture. Hmm. But, but, but in the literature, of course, I mentioned to these uh, uh, studies. Great, thanks. I can see there's some typing. Um, and feel free to use the microphone as well. Paco, I don't know if you wanted to ask your question using the mic or um, if you want, I'm happy to read it out. Sure, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was very good to see um, uh, your research. It's uh, just a methodological question about the use of uh, UTAUT. I always struggle to say it. And the possibility to use other uh, frameworks that have been used for in terms of the acceptance of technology, like the several versions of TAM that seem to, to allow personalization in the questions. I was wondering if you had considered using other frameworks or, or why the reason you have used uh, UTAUT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this question. Uh, I use uh, UTAUT because it has some factors uh, that not not in the TAM. And actually, UTAUT it um, it, it includes eight uh, theories, right? So uh, I chose this one, but but I think the 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 question is why I didn't use UTAUT uh, the second version 
because it, it, uh, it includes the some factors like habit and uh, price value. Uh, the literature mentioned that we don't use these uh, factors, and uh, and and and, uh, and the recent uh, research uh, about OER's adoption in uh, in different cultures in uh, UC, UC, uh, USA, sorry, and Korea, and uh, the third country I I can't I can't remember. They mentioned that the uh, um, the uh, the habits and price value they they didn't have any uh, any impact on behavior intention. So I prefer to use the UTA UT for uh, for different reasons from the literature, and for this uh, reason as well. And thank you for uh, for your mention about the response rate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It yeah. was uh, it, it was really uh, uh, complicated and uh, difficult time, but yes. And um, inshallah, next month I'm go I'm going to publish the same survey. Uh, but after COVID nineteen, this is was uh, before COVID nineteen, and I uh, I intend to do this um, the second stage of my uh, questionnaire. Because um, uh, as far as I remember, uh, Professor Willer present a, uh, a, a some data of open open learn during the uh, COVID nineteen, and he noticed that the uh, the, the 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 visitors or the users uh, increased around five hundred percent right before the COVID nineteen. We are not all together inside. Yeah, I think. Yes, yes, you are right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate all your comments. And I promise you, and when I finish the second stage, I'm going to present my findings. Thank you. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, it is a shame that we're not all together in Taiwan. There's so many conversations, I think, that um, yeah. we could be having. And I hope that we all do get to have those um, in, in the future um, as well. Um, were there any final questions for Samia before we um, move on to our final presenter? If not, we can come back at the end as well. We've got a little bit of time um, then. Um, so thank you so much, Samia. That was thank fantastic. You. Really awesome presentation and really interesting. Um, and thank yeah, you. look forward to this discussion <laughs> going thank forward. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. So moving on, Ooh, I'm just going to load up the next slides and introduce our final um, our final speaker. Um, I'm delighted to welcome um, Annie Radha, who's going to talk to us about frameworks to increase collaboration um, through a Moodle plugin. So thank you so much. Okay, hi everybody. Hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, so I'm Anne Radha from Sri Lanka. And uh, I'm doing, uh, uh, actually, there are two stages. First one is uh, I'm presenting uh, the framework of uh, foster collaborative learning. That's a latter part. The first part is uh, we have implemented the PBL uh, mood with the Moodle. And uh, that is what today I'm going to uh, present you all. Uh, currently, my supervisors are Dr. Udita and Professor Shironika. They are from the Open University of Sri Lanka. Uh, today's session, uh, I'm covering the mobile PBL framework that I have developed and then the current state of the students and then how we can foster collaborative learning among engineering students by using the OER or open education. Uh, so at the first stage, what we have done, uh, designing development of a tool to support the problem-based learning. Here, uh, what we have done, uh, we have used the design-based research approach. Uh, and initially, we have analyzed the uh, 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 university students and teachers by uh, distributing questionnaires uh, among 1,005 uh, students and 300 uh, engineering teachers. And then uh, we found that uh, the 
students' readiness and teachers' readiness for the uh, technology and how they can perform with the technology. And then uh, second stage, what we have done, uh, designing and development the solution or the uh, uh, how we can go for the project-based learning with engineering students. So there we have uh, developed a course uh, to uh, foster the problem-based learning by using the Moodle mo Moodle web-based system because in our Sri Lanka, most of the uh, courses were delivered through the uh, Moodle platform in engineering faculties. Therefore, we use that. And by doing the course, uh, developing the course, and we uh, try to uh, uh, get the uh, details and findings uh, from uh, the teachers and students how they perform and how they work with that. And the third thing uh, that we have done, we have uh, uh, given the uh, mobile app, uh, mobile plugin. We have developed that plugin and integrated with the mobile plat uh, Moodle platform. And we have given the same uh, problem based learning activities through the mobile uh, plugin, what we have developed. And then we get the uh, observation result, focus group interviews, and the log reports to check how they perform. Finally, we have developed a framework uh, 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 to post a problem with learning. If there is anybody who is uh, trying to uh, uh, do the pro uh, problem-based learning or the teaching activities, how they can perform, and it's a guide for the uh, teachers. So uh, this is the framework which we have developed. Actually, we have developed that with the uh, Dr. Hakim Yusuf, Professor Priyandais, and Dr. Tushani, uh, my uh, supervisors at that time, uh, because I did my MPhil with them. Currently, I'm a PhD student. Uh, so this uh, what we have focused in the uh, this. Um, uh, the hexagon, the points uh, represent the problem-based learning activities or the problem-based uh, practices, how we can do it, the group formation, facilitate allocation, uh, evaluation, um, present uh, uh, sharing information, identification of learning facts, uh, and uh, the problem presentation. So those are the uh, key main uh, activities that we have to follow in the problem-based learning. And when we are going to uh, introduce a new uh, uh, technology to the student or the teacher, we have to consider about the didactical triangle content, uh, content student and the teacher. When it comes to the content and the teacher teaching, uh, we call it as the relationship with the teaching. And when it comes to the student and content, we um, uh, talk about the learning as a, that relationship. And the student and the teacher, we consider it as a training. And we, when we are going to practice these activities as um, Samia mentioned, so I have, uh, we have taken the technology adoption model factors. So the, those factors are matters. And we found that with the questionnaires, interviews, and their reports, when the content and teach or the teaching relationship mainly matters on the perceived easiness, easy of use. And the content and the students mainly matter the perceived usefulness. And when it comes to training or the facilitating activity, behavior intention matters. And uh, the all together, when we consider the all aspects of the concern, the, the attitude matters when we are going to transform some uh, technology development to uh, our education system. So it's uh, education. And so we will uh, put that into the center of our model. So that is what uh, the uh, model and how we perform. And then when we consider about that uh, problem-based activities by using the mobile form, uh, if we, if someone practicing it, they have to consider some factors. So if we are using a problem present or the problem, if we are using a problem to reach a student uh, about the uh, engineering education or the engineering subjects, so they mainly consider they have to uh, consider about the real world scenario and it should be divided into sub problems because students are practicing it with the uh, small group and then they have to consider about the learning facts so when you are finding the learning fact it should be easy easy to share uh, easy to sh search and uh, so they are, where they are the uh, open education resources comes here so they should have to easily share and e easily uh, uh, content and the audio video text and uh, they should be easily mm, searching and then when we are uh, using the mobile application to do the activities the bandwidth and file size matters in sri lanka when it goes to the rural area the bandwidth is uh, 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 very uh, uh, difficult for student to uh, learn with the, in this pandemic they face that uh, problem as well and then the um, 
fourth factor is the when we are forming the group the small group three to four members are the ideal ideal uh, factor and then the um, random group formation made the students work uh, uh, with the peers and they understand their activities and uh, they perform very well and the facilitate allocation is students are preferred to have the teacher as well as the industry expert because they as the engineers when they go out to the uh, uh, society they have to work with the industry people so they did not try to get the feedback from the industry expert as well and then when it comes to the evaluation self peer group teacher both fourth four kind of evaluation again may make the student to work effectively and get the practices uh, real time so those are the things they have to consider about this and then our next step is to collaborate you learning now if the problem based learning if they are practicing uh, they have to work with the group with the real world scenario so as the co collaborative learning define uh, the educational approach to teaching and learning that involves group of learners working together to solve problem complete the task or a create a product so they need to have a um, clear intention to a uh, clear activity to work towards the uh, with the teacher and the uh, students and then uh, so when they are going to perform the collaborative learning activities our next step is to the research question is to how they interact uh, collaboratively and whether we can uh, move with the our developed application or the mobile plugin and then the, th the third question is to how these module based activities for, uh, 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 enhance the student interaction and then uh, we can whether we can uh, monitor their activities through the plugin to foster it so uh, the the objectives are uh, the same uh, the, so to exploring and designing the activities and then we are going to use the learning analytic techniques to uh, monitor their collaborative activities so uh, again here also we are mapping the dbr approach with our research questions uh, we are mainly focusing on the thomas reeves uh, dbr uh, framework so first uh, diagram shows the uh, thomas reeves framework and how we map it to the um, our research so uh, the analyzing the practical problem we are exploring the our electronic interaction as i mentioned earlier when we are doing the problem based learning framework and then designing the moodle mobile plugin so we have already developed the plugin for the uh, pbl activity so we are finding with the iterative cycle whether we can improve it with the collaborative learning activities and the uh, third step what we are going to do the with the iterative cycles data analytics techniques we are with the forums or the chat session or blogging or what we are we are trying to check the uh, how students perform with the mobile learning activities and when the teacher um, sharing information with the open education resources or uh, how they uh, given the activities and whether the students are willing to share their activities with the with openly with other students group activities and then uh, we try to enhance a collaborative learning framework so those are the uh, uh, things and the initial stage of uh, the my phd activities we uh, found we have given the questionnaire survey and we found that uh, mainly uh, how we came up with the mobile activity because most of the students are accessing internet through their smartphones and they own the smartphones and uh, the laptop and the desktop ownership is very uh, low compared to the smartphone ownership and they are accessing the internet three to two hours from their mobile uh, when they are doing the learning activity so we want to perform these activities through the mobile uh, so if they are using that into a different kind of uh, purposes we try to move that into a learning or the educational purposes uh, so here is the uh, skills that the student perform as an engineering student what are the uh, skills that perform so they are very um, lacking on the experience of the learning management systems and programming and uh, the web to tech tools and databases and graphic and those or the open education resources or whatever they they are lacking on the knowledge and how they perform the activities but they are more good at word processing spreadsheet presentation and email so through this app we are trying to perform the student to work in the learning management system and web to to act uh, tools and how they can perform activities to the open educational resources uh, so 
and we found that uh, the most of the students are familiar with the video conferencing facility the zoom and the google so uh, in our collaborative activities we try to have a, a zoom session as well as the google or the, the whatever the uh, students are preferred to work with and with the breakout rooms we try to uh, perform activities through them as a video conferencing activity so uh, so activities how we are monitoring and doing the conceptual design for the interaction monitoring so there is a facilitator and facilitators are given the activities and there are a group uh, of students they are interact with their members and also they are interact with their group members and uh, they, are, they share information with the facilitator and also uh, their activities are uh, mainly assignments or forum or the projects uh, they will get, uh, they will be assigning by the facilitator and students have to perform with their tasks by using chat, email, audio, video, or whatever the ways that they are interacting. We are monitoring it through the system without going to the any other activities. They, we are encouraging students to use the uh, university learning platform. So from that, uh, we try to monitor the four types of interaction, learner content, learner instructor, learner learn, and uh, the uh, learner interface interactions. So. Uh, those are the things we are covering and uh, and i would like to get your suggestions and uh, questions and answer session here in notes thank you very much and thank you very much uh, geonet uh, gn give me an opportunity to present my activities and thank you very much for my all supervisors uh, encouraging me to do this activity thank you thank you so much that was fantastic and um yeah really interesting um I've got a question. I can see there's some typing um, happening at the moment, um, but feel free um, if you if you would like to ask a question to use the microphone as well. Um, so I'll just pause. Okay. Yes, there's one question from the, Martin uh, asking, do you think engineering students differ from other subjects in their relation to collaborative work? Uh, yes, uh, because engineering students, when they go to the society, they have to work with the real world. They are performing activities with the society. So no, unlike other uh, uh, people or other students, they have to work collaboratively uh, when they are going to dis um, give in the decisions. So as a team, they have to decide, they have to come up with the one uh, solution to uh, develop uh, the thing, uh, thing. Say if you are going to develop a bridge, they have to get the ideas with the other uh, group members. They have to uh, obey other group members' uh, activities. And uh, by doing the collaborative task with the small group, they will perform those activities to bear others, other others uh, participants or other peers' um, decisions or suggestions. They have to come and not unlike others they have they can't go with their own activities so it's a teamwork engineering is a teamwork to come up with this or come to final end product to go to a end product so i hope that would be an answer that's fantastic yeah thank you and thanks martin um as well for the question sorry i missed that in the chat earlier um Paco's got a comment as well about, um, uh, so Paco says, um, I appreciate the detail of your presentation and research, Anuradha. I just wonder how you managed to do all those methods in a PhD. Seems a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I have almost completed the PBL activity part and developing the uh, mobile uh, application. So the in the PhD step, what I have to do, we, I have to practice that with the collaborative learning, the say uh, with two iterative cycles, and I have to check the or the improvements of the plugin as well as the improvement of the uh, activities. So currently, I have completed my MPhil with that framework. So the, my MPhil output is the framework of the PBL activity. Then the PhD part is the collaborative part. So hope I can finish it. We'll see. Thank you. That's awesome. I can see Paco's typing as well. Um, so just while there's some other questions um, and comments coming in, thank you, Paco, for that one. I just wanted to ask quickly. Um, you mentioned about smartphones and um, people tending to use smartphones um, rather than other, um, uh, say, laptops or other devices. And I just wondered, um, is that a case of? Um, kind of leapfrogging a mobile first is it the case that 
um, uh, yeah, I just wondered um, what the background was really around that. So if, um, uh, to do with uh, access. Like uh, now in Sri Lankan context, uh, owning a laptop or a desktop is uh, they have to uh, pay say 100,000 uh, rupees in Sri Lankan rupees. Say it about a uh, uh, lot of money for the student. But uh, owning a smartphone, it's a... Uh, 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 10,000 rupees or uh, the, something like that. So, and the, when it comes to the data and the um, packages which we have in Sri Lankan context, students yeah. can't buy those. Kind. But the, as a smartphone, they are giving a, uh, for the university students and all, there are some data packages. And also when they come to the university, they have a free Wi-Fi access. Uh, so I hope uh, the most of the students are using smartphone for the WhatsApp and Viber uh, activities. So that's why they may use the uh, internet-based activities through the mobile uh, phones. And these surveys was done uh, for the first year students because we have to practice learning management system with them. And uh, if I did this for the final year students, most of them were owning a, a computer laptop because after completing their first year, uh, they are giving uh, uh, loans and student uh, related uh, activities to get the laptops. So uh, I think that might be a bit different, but this uh, uh surveys were done to uh, only to the first year students because we have to find whether we can go for online learning teaching activities to them uh, with what are what kind of resources they have so that is uh, the main concern but uh, in final year students they may want their own laptops with the concessionaries given from the universities and the government thank you that's really useful thanks for that background and that's really helpful lovely and Related goodbye to Leo as well. I can see in the chat um, as well, um, who says thank you to everyone. Um, Paco also comments, thanks. It always um, helps to start with some work done, clear ideas in a collaborative research group. So that's lovely. Thanks, Paco. Um, did anyone have any quest more questions at all um, uh, for Anuradha? And then we'll open it up to wider questions as well. Martin, hi. Hi, so my one's not uh, specifically for Anurada, but actually for all three presenters. I guess it's more about, um, particularly as we're likely to be carrying online for the next year or so, um, and I was commenting how it would have been nice if we were all together in mm -hmm. Taiwan, and I could see there'd be really useful conversations between the three of you that you, you would probably have if you were face-to-face. -face. So I guess it's just if you've got any suggestions for us in terms of GoGN about things that we could do that would be helpful maybe to kind of foster those conversations and uh, discussions or something if just if you've got any thoughts don't worry if you haven't but yeah thank you thanks martin yeah that's a yeah if there's any suggestions at all um at any point um then please do let us know um i'll pause though in case anyone wanted to um say anything at the moment And see some typing in the chat. So I'll, um, yeah, uh, um, thanks, Martin. Um, so, yeah, any suggestions of how we can help you and support you with your research, um, please do let us know. Don't hesitate to drop us an email. Um, and um, yeah, just <laughs> yes, tell us what you'd like to see more of. And um, or yeah, what actually, do better, I'm... Or... <laughs> One more uh, help I need uh, when evaluating my frameworks, I need your help uh, and your uh, experts' help because I don't know whether it will uh, can perform with the now PBL I have done, but the collaborative learning part, uh, I need your help for the okay. evaluation. Okay, great. So don't, um, yeah, just please just email us when we can help or if you want to um, have a chat with us. So something that we've yeah. done previously, um, uh, I think about six months ago, we had um, sessions where you can meet with the team and talk one on one about your research. So if it would be helpful to have um, that kind of session with us, please let us know um, and we can set up um, a time with you um, uh, and talk um, as well. Um, like Martin says, we're not meeting face to face at the moment. 
Um, and usually, yeah, we would do, um, obviously we'd be in Taiwan and then um, for OE Global and then hopefully at other conferences as well. Um, that's great. And yes, please do. Um, uh, thank you for sharing that, Sammy, as well, about your survey. Um, and V, thank you. Yeah. Any time at all, please do contact us. So just before, um, we've got a couple more minutes. If anybody had any other questions or things they wanted to share, I'll just pause um, before we then close the session and I'll thank everybody. So if anyone's got anything that they wanted to raise, questions? Yes. Uh, actually, I would like to uh, comment and uh, give the V uh, presentation. It's really good presentation in Sri Lankan context. Also, we don't have uh, repositories open education. So once uh, we Tom has completed her research, I think we can adapt that into the Sri Lanka as well. That's fantastic. My research will be, I mean, productive, and I mean, like I can finish it soon for you to read, for people to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's fantastic. Okay, lovely. Well. Yeah. I'd like to thank, um, if there's any, I'm just going to pause in case there's any very last minute things. Um, I'll just put the, the final slides up um, just a moment. So um, just to remind people of the rest of the day. Um, but I do want to start and, and just um, thank um, so much um, V, Samia and Anuradha for this session. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed hearing about all of your research and um, yeah, I'm excited to see um, uh, and hear more.